the Germans are coming. It's a true story. The royal family is German. You can check that out yourself. Don't take my word for it. Three ways they control us. Who are they? You know, we can save that for a rainy day. Number one, psychological, right? Gone are the days of an overt, boot in your face type fascism, type tyranny, right? Where it's just obvious. So, oh, it's them. Let's make sure that they do it again. Now it's all covert, right? It's all psychological and it starts at state school. Their system, right? Their syllabus. And unfortunately, what happens is the mind is fractured, right? Into elements, that's what we call it, elementary school. And it's rendered incapable of comprehending the whole. Like, if you notice that children ask themselves incredible questions like, you know, where are they? What are they? How can you see me right now? What's that up there? Is that a moon? What, what do you mean? What, a moon? What, what are these stars? All that amazing innate curiosity and wisdom and awe is slowly but surely removed throughout what we call state school, because that's the purpose, right? They're trying to get you by way of convergent thinking, which remember is like basically fixating your gaze upon externalized information and like just have the mind flooded from all angles um, by a bombardment of bullshit, namely by um, you know state school teachers who have had the same psyop performed on them and therefore they loved it so much they can't wait to get back in and parrot everything they've learned. But why if what they've been learning and what they've been teaching is not correct, you know? This is where the independent thinker comes in. This is where uh, convergent or rather divergent thinking is very much um, a necessity if we're to actually evolve into a higher species. Uh, but it starts at state school, of course, um, this is where the psychological manipulation starts to take place because what they're doing is they're leading you down the garden path, right, into accepting a lifetime sentence of indentured servitude. And that's the next point, right, work. Your work, like, what's happening is you're going from your home, which is four walls, roof and a floor, and then you're quickly commuting over to the office and you're putting yourself in a little box again. So we're literally, like, moving around in the matrix from the suburbs into the financial centres or wherever, and get to work and we are unfortunately incarcerated not only by our bodies in terms of the mind but also by the architecture and the buildings that surround us all and then of course we're looking at these big screens right we're already in the matrix it's already happening it's just not how it appears to be uh on the sci-fi film the matrix right which is actually an allegory for our situation us being neo right we're the protagonist we are the true man right the truman show it's us so they know this and they're sort of, it's all a bit of mockery for them. Um, so education and work, you know, which, you know, work is uh, taking up a considerable amount of time from our lives, right? And then you have the fortunate uh, potential of retiring and then dying, right? But the whole point of your whole life is to keep you psychologically interred, as they call it. Interred, meaning ultimately dead, right? They know that your birth was a baptism in matter, right? They know that you are a soul, right? You are consciousness, you are mind, first and foremost. And then you just dropped in, just like when you get in your car in the morning. You, throughout your life, you're driving your body. You're animating matter, right? All this carbon, all this calcium, it's not you. Chop your finger off, you can see it yourself. That finger wasn't you, right? You can do the same thing for any uh, body part. Um, we can talk about that in more detail in other videos, but... The point here is that it's a psychological manipulation, right? Beginning with education, going through work, and of course, when you're not working, they've got the TV for you, which tells lies to your vision. I don't really like that, but that's what people say, you know, TV. And, um, you know, they've got everything for you. They've got, like, you know, all sorts of comedians coming up for you, and they're loving it up there, you know, in the limelight. They can't wait to show you. Like, when I was a little kid, we used to, like, sit in the front room, my parents would and they'd wait for me and my cousins and my sister to come and give them a little show have a magic show dancing they'd be singing all sorts of things i'd show them some kick-ups with the ball and that's really what that's a microcosm of society right they want us to be entertained right so this is actually their uh, maintained together i can't remember exactly now the etymology of that word entertained but it's like inter tenere like together fixed our gaze is fixed and again like you know enter could be inter which i think is like they're saying together but also interred that's a bit of a um perhaps a bit of a stretch to be honest um 
politics. So once you've got beyond that, right? So throughout your education and then your twenties, like you're mostly working, and then you, oh, thank God it's Friday, and then it's Monday blues again, right? You get thrown around like that. Eventually, you might start to think, well, something's gone a bit wrong here. Something, something's not quite right. You know, your spiritual immune system will come online, and that's where politics is is right there, ready for you, right, to jeep you next. You might become political. You might become politicised and think, oh, well, I bloody, oh, this is terrible. I'm going to be a woke lefty now. And now you're going to be um, vested into a political system, which is just another uh, pantomime, which is just another psyop. Uh, I've just made a video. I can't remember where I pasted it now, but I did make a video um, showing you, you know, exactly uh, what Lenin said. Um, you know, um, the best way to control the opposition is to lead it ourselves. Vladimir Lenin. Of Russia, right? They all, it's all a psychological style. It's all the nature of 21st century fascism is 100% psychological. And so they love it when they've got all these football. Why do you think there's so much money in sport and football, right? And in TV and all these kind of stuff, right? It's to keep you constantly distracted, constantly. If you think of yourself as, as, a, as a, you know, a ball, right? Because we love balls on this planet basketballs, footballs, cricket balls, tennis balls, table tennis balls, whatever. They're keeping our minds this size when actually, you know, which is sort of a mind spell. Really, we're out here, we're meant to, uh, you know, feet on the ground, head in the stars, head in the sky, right? But our head isn't in the stars. Our head is firmly rooted uh, and directed towards these huge screens, which is like, unfortunately, keeping us in this interred state of consciousness. So that's ultimately uh, number one. And, you know, just to finish that point on number one, I mean, we've been waffling on a little bit already too much, unfortunately. But, um, you know, even once you start awakening, they've got psyops for that as well. So a lot of people who are in sort of awakening um, communities, they've started saying that the earth is flat. You know, and this is a psyop. This is actually a psyop to regress the human mind and to confuse and then also to smear and to, you know, through this label agenda, everyone will get framed as a flat earther, you know. I've just been speaking up recently about some of the more medical psyops, right, um, in the world. And of course, you know, you start saying some actually very rational things, but they immediately, because it's so outrageous to them, they want to say, oh, well, you must be a flat earther. Like, what? I've never said anything of the sort. Um, and so, you know, even for, as people begin to awaken, you notice like all of the sort of media and the entertainment, that's, you know, alternative media, there's no action that's coming out of this. It's all just like information. Like they don't care if you're just getting informed. What are you going to do about it? And this is really what New Earth is all about. You know, it's just actually like trying to be proactive and creating this New Earth by way of these uh, co-housing projects, you know, which I've designed and which you can check out more on newearth.land, which is simply about true freedom, abundance and well-being in the world. Um, so do visit uh, newearth.land if you want to learn more about that. Um, so, of course, psychological is first and foremost, you know, as we think, so we feel, so we act. So, psychologically, they um, are hoodwinking us, unfortunately, and leading us into um, Agenda 30, right? Which was formerly known as Agenda 21, the Millennium Project, actually, originally. And, uh, you know, you know what the agenda is, right? We're not going to get too conspiratorial here on YouTube because I'll get censored again. So number two, moving from the mind into matter, into the body, physiological, right? They are unfortunately keeping us drugged on alcohol, on denatured junk food, which is very carb intensive. So very sugar intense. They know that sugar is essentially a drug, is keeping us absolutely sleepy. You know, the, the carbohydrates are absolutely spiking and then dumping you, so pump and dump an anatomical pump and dump, right? Which is a scam in, in cryptocurrency. Watch out for that. I got caught out with that one. And um, your body is constantly there, like when you have a carb coma, right? This is keeping us in this state of this quite sleepy state of consciousness. And we've been drugged by food. So when you feel hungry, that's actually more of an addiction that you're feeling. Um, it's not true hunger. So, you know, I, I myself was like trying to now reduce to OMAD, you know, one meal a day. And, you know, this sort of balance of fasting and feasting, I, I feel is a more... Uh, natural harmonious way of uh, you know, providing nutrition to the body so you physiologically like you go into the supermarket right and pretty much beyond the first two aisles it's sort of like wartime it's like what is all this stuff like in these cans and all these packets all this denatured stuff um i'd say you know, again what you know what's happening what's happened to um 
agorism, what's happened to people growing their own food, what's happened to you know just organic uh, vegetables being the natural way of life. Instead, now, now they're going to charge you uh, the sun just to pay for something that's actually just its natural uh, way of existing. Uh, so of course they're going to try and license. You know, like licensing is essentially like the government stealing your possessions and then selling it to <laughs> to you back. So you, you want it, if you want it to be organic, it needs to be um, you know it needs to have this sign here. How, how are you going to get that? Well, you have to pay us money. Um, and you know, Monsanto, Bill Gates, all these GMOs, all these like agrochemical corporations that are just spraying our food. It's getting more and more insane by the day. The only way we're going to get ourselves out of this is by coming together and crowdfunding our land and seeing that if we can freely provide ourselves energy, food and water from the comfort of our own homes, then we can call that post-capitalism. We can call that whatever we want, but we can call it ultimately common sense, right? Because why why would your food come from the other side of the planet? Like, it doesn't make any sense in any, in any way, not only in terms of uh, health, but also in terms of the environment. It's what a waste of energy. So that's absolutely insane. And they're controlling the, the food networks, of course, in this way. Um, they're just absolutely starving us of everything that we actually need in these, like, uh, what we call cities, which are coming in prisons. And then uh, they're selling us to them back you know, at a premium. So anyway, that's number two. So we're going to be psychological number one, physiological number two. Number three is, of course, financial. We have to be financially enslaved. You have to pay to be alive, which is absurdity piled upon absurdity. We are spending around on a microscopic rock in space. Uh, no other species is charging themselves to exist. We are not even charging ourselves to exist. It's happening to us by way of, ultimately, the monarchy and then Her Majesty's government, right? Her Majesty's most loyal opposition, right? Remember, politics is a scam. Um, the best way to control the opposition is to lead it ourselves. Um, so financially, yeah, like, they want bills. Like, you know, these the reason these bills are increasing right now, it's all planned, Right, they're stealing your money, and then you're going to have to eventually rent your own possessions back when they try and bail you out. It's like I can't pay for anything anymore. Well, we can offer you this, and then you're absolutely, um, unfortunately, under control, and uh, you have a dependency on the state, which is absolutely what they want. That's the agenda here. All right, let's not beat around the bush. Let's not pull any punches. We're dealing with 21st century psychological uh, fascism, but again, the labels are. Let's not get bogged down. Communism, fascism. Uh, ultimately uh, the same thing with a different dress on um, so you know are you fed up with these ever increasing skywriting bills for rent and are you stressed as a result of it you know do you want to live in a better world because those three ways that they control us have been the same pretty much um, since time immemorial but you know psychologically physiologically and financially we are being enslaved to the wage and uh you know, we're the only people that can come together and put an end to this madness, you know. So I do hope that you will be inspired to perhaps, you know, uh, go on to newf.land and find out, you know, what I've been doing in more detail. Like, I'm going to be designing many more schemes that are a lot more rural, because this one, this is suburban. But you can sort of see uh, through the virtual reality tour what I'm talking about, you know, like shelter, energy, food and water. These things, through the technologies that we have, can absolutely be provided from the comfort of our homes, from our doorsteps. And so I'm just saying, like, why don't we just do that, right? And forget about the labels, right? Let's just see it as a project, right? If I was a billionaire, I, I'd just do it, and there'd be no questions asked, and then it's just, oh, yeah, this is this is great. Like, let's just keep doing it. It's basically socialist co-housing, right? It's what, it's what the government should have been doing all this time, but haven't, and never will. And so we have to realise that the government is here to fool us, nothing else, really. We need to reclaim our power and we can do that by reclaiming our land. And then we will reclaim our lands, uh, our minds, by way of um, having true freedom in the world, right? You will have a basic right to exist and therefore you'll have more freedom to find fulfilling work, more freedom to just simply be, more freedom to cook the food that you like to cook, more freedom to spend time with your friends and family, more freedom to enjoy traveling around this tiny little planet and more freedom to live your life the way that you truly want to. So please do check out newearth.land to learn more about this, um, you know, and we can stay in touch in that way. Uh, you know, like this, that's what's going to empower us, as Martin Luther King said. Those who love peace must learn to organise themselves as effectively as those who love war. We need to organise ourselves. That's what is wrong, right? We're not coordinated. And again, that's what politics does. It eventually or ultimately um, divides us. 
you know, it divides us in so many ways, but it outsources our power to these people who are essentially just puppets, right? So I think people are, this is beginning to dawn on people, and hopefully we can begin to usher in a new, enlightened, awakened world um, in which true freedom, abundance, and well-being is just the way it is. Um, so, yeah. Thanks very much for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.